I think that buprenorphine actually should be one of the first line opioids. Um, that probably will not happen again because of managed care. Anyway, that, that's a problem. So buprenorphine um, is available in two products that are specifically FDA approved for, for pain. Uh, Belbuca, which is the buccal film, and Butrions, which is the seven-day transdermal patch. Um, for primary care providers, um, I think uh, that they need to understand, even though it's in the package insert, you have you have warnings about not using it in patients that have you know a history of substance abuse and all that sort of stuff. Well, that's true with any opioid, but sometimes you're kind of in a pickle. You have a patient that medically cannot take NSAIDs or NSAIDs wouldn't be beneficial for that patient. They can't be on SNRIs and things like duloxetine, either for medical reasons or other reasons. Uh, they, they can't be on anticonvulsants because they're really only useful for neuropathic pain. So you're kind of stuck with opioids, uh, you know, in a patient that has an elevated risk um, because, of, because of opioid misuse. Buprenorphine is a wonderful drug to use in those patients because it really doesn't cause a lot of euphoria, if any. Um, uh, it's, it's safer because if you were to overuse it, it has a plateau. Uh, so in other words, with other opioids, the higher the dose, the more CO2 accumulation you get. With buprenorphine, there's a selling effect on CO2. So you can keep taking and taking it, um, but you're not going to accumulate CO2 beyond a certain point. Then we've got the patients that need to be on a benzodiazepine. And this question you get all the time. Well, you know, my patient needs to be on alprazolam, my patient needs to be on diazepam. I'm being told, you know, by the CDC, these are risky combinations. You know, what should I do? Well, you know what? If you had them on buprenorphine, the risk would be less because the benzodiazepines cause additional accumulation of CO2. But you're only going to be able to do that to a certain point if you're on buprenorphine because it's a partial agonist slash antagonist opioid. So pharmacologically, it's really a different, it's a different animal. I mean, it's, it's in the same kingdom, but, it, but, it, but it's a different animal. So I think that um, people really need, need to realize that. The other um, group of patients that I have on buprenorphine for pain are, are patients that medically fall into the same categories like I just talked about. Let's see, I've got a, a type two diabetic patient. Uh, they've got some kidney dysfunction. We can't give them NSAIDs. They got coronary artery disease. They're gonna need to be an opioid, but they're, they're a risk. So um, let's say they've got CO, CO, pretty severe COPD. I'm gonna put them on buprenorphine. So I think that a lot of clinicians think about if I, if, if I um, did all the things that I need to do, and I justified that this patient needs to be on a chronic opioid, one of the, the two of the first drugs they're going to reach for are tramadol because it's a schedule four, or codeine because it's a schedule three. Well, codeine is a sloppy drug. From a metabolic standpoint, it is a sloppy, sloppy drug. And it has a lot of side effects. Uh, tramadol is an even sloppier drug. It's, it almost has, it's, it's, it's a pathetic opioid. It has almost no opioid activity at all. Uh, and then it, it also affects norepinephrine and serotonin. Um, so those are, the, those are the go-to drugs. They shouldn't be the go-to drugs. The go-to drug to start a patient on opioid chronically should be buprenorphine. It really, it really should. But again, we have managed care dictating, you know, the price is higher, so we're gonna use the cheaper stuff first, and if the cheaper stuff doesn't work or the patient dies, oh well. That's just wrong. I mean, from a scientific perspective, I think the buprenorphine products really should be used as first line. If, you know, if you, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's, and, and it's determined that chronic opioid therapy is a good thing, then start with buprenorphine. The patients are not gonna get the euphoria. So they're not going to crave more drug like they would with a pure opioid.